Hey guys, Chris from Adapt Solution here, and in this video, I'm going to show you the solution for question 7 from the Jan 2013 PUA Paper 2. If you want to see the solutions for the other questions on this paper, I'm going to put a card up there and a link in the description below. So be sure to check those out as well. And with that said, let's get into the question. Okay, so the question starts off by telling us MMC Company Limited has an authorized share capital of 300,000 ordinary shares of $2 each and 100,000 6% preference shares of $3 each. On the 1st of January 2012, the company issued the following. So we have here 200,000 ordinary shares at $2.50 each and 80,000 6% preference shares at $3.25 each. It further goes on to say all shares were fully subscribed or sold. The requirement we have for this part of the question is to prepare the journal entry to record the issue of the shares and state one difference between ordinary shares and preference shares. Okay, so let's take a look at that solution, shall we? Before we jump into the solution, if you are not sure how to do journal entries regarding the issue of shares for limited liability companies, I'm going to put a card up there with a link to my video on how to do that. And you'll also find a link to that video in the description as well. So if you are not comfortable with this particular aspect of limited companies, please feel free to check those videos out and then come back here. If, however, you are comfortable and you're ready to see the solution, let's go. Okay, so even though the question asks for the journal entry, I'm going to do two separate entries to record the issue of the ordinary shares separately from the issue of the preference shares. Now, it says we issue 200,000 ordinary shares at $2.50 each, and all of the shares were fully subscribed or sold. So we issue 200,000 shares for $2.50 each. So when you multiply the number of shares by the amount of money that was charged for each share, 200,000 by 250 is going to give us $500,000 coming in. And that's going into the bank account. Now with general journal entries, we enter our debit entries first. And you're going to see that debit to cash or I put cash slash bank, right? Cash or bank for 500,000. Now why? Because cash and bank are both assets. When money is coming in, the asset is going up. To record an increase in an asset, you have to debit the asset account. And of course, every debit requires a corresponding credit or credits to balance off the value. Now, where do the credits go? Now, the money is coming from the issue of ordinary shares. So we are going to be crediting ordinary shares. However, we're not going to be crediting ordinary share capital for $500,000. Why? Because in the opening paragraph, they tell us that the ordinary shares have a par value of $2 each. So if we issued for $2.50 each, we're issuing for 50 cents above the par value. The amount above the par value for which the shares are issued, 50 cents, that's called the share premium, the extra above the par value. And when we are recording the issue of shares, share capital, we need to record the par value and the premium separately because the premium does not count towards the authorized share capital value. Okay, so we issued 200,000 ordinary shares. Their par value is $2. So 200,000 by two is gonna give us $400,000. And that's gonna be credited to ordinary share capital. Now the remaining 100,000, which is 200,000 shares by 50 cents, which is half a dollar, and 200,000 by half is 100,000, is going to be credited to share premium. Right? And you're going to see a narration here that says, right, to record the issue of 200,000 two dollar ordinary shares at two dollars and fifty cents per share. Okay, now let's take a look at the journal entry to record the issue of the preference shares. So it says that we issued 80,000 six percent preference shares at 325 each. So, first things first, 80,000 is the number of shares issued, 325 is the issue price, which we'll notice is actually above the par value of the, the preference shares, which is noted here as $3, okay? So we're also going to have a premium element in this particular journal entry. But what about the 6%? Does that factor into what we are doing right now? So first of all, the 6% is the dividend rate on the preference shares. And that only comes into play when you're paying dividends. It does not come into play at all when you are issuing the shares and you are recording the money received from the issue. Right? So only when you're paying dividends will the 6% come into play. So right now, it's totally irrelevant in terms of our calculation. So first things first, we're going to multiply the 80,000 
by the three dollars and twenty five cents, and that's going to give us a total amount of money coming in, which is going to be two hundred and sixty thousand. So again, we could put cash slash bank, or you could even put cash book or just bank. Most times it's just bank. Now, how are we going to break up this two sixty? Is the whole thing going to go to the credit of preference share capital? No. Why? Because three twenty five is the issue price, but the par value is three dollars. So we're going to multiply the eighty thousand by three, and that's going to give us two hundred and forty thousand. And that's going to be credited to the 6% preference share capital account. The remaining 20,000 will go to the share premium account, right? Because that's the difference between the par value of the ordinary, of the preference share, sorry, and the actual amount of money for which they were issued. And our narration will say to record the issue of $80,003 preference shares at $3.25 each. Of course, you could stick in the 6% in the front here. All right, okay, and those are the journal entries to record the issue of the shares. Let's take a look at the other part where they were asking us about differences between ordinary and preference shares. Okay, so they asked for one difference between ordinary and preference shares. I'm going to give you a few. So for ordinary shares, they have voting rights, they have no fixed rate of dividend, and they are paid last regarding distributions. And by distributions, I mean dividends and liquidation. That's if the company is going out of business and selling off assets and repaying all of its creditors and investors. That's liquidation. For preference shares, they have no voting rights, they are paid a fixed rate of dividend, and they are paid before ordinary shareholders with respect to distributions, right? I think I have ordinary shareholders here. <laughs> Whoops. All right, ordinary shareholders. Okay, all right, let's take a look at part B to this question, shall we? Okay, so part B reads as follows. MMC Company Limited generated revenue of $755,800 and a net profit of $302,600 for the year ended 31st December 2012. The company has decided to share the net profit as follows. Okay, so we have a transfer to the General Reserve Fund and we are paying dividends. Ordinary shareholders are getting $55,000. Preference shareholders are getting their entitlement. Hmm, interesting. We're going to have to calculate that. We are required to prepare a statement of MMC Company Limited's profit and loss appropriation account for the year ended 31st December 2012. So of course, please be sure to head up your statement properly. Name of the entity, name of the statement, the period to which it applies. If you're wondering what FYE means, it means for the year ended. So we are going to start off with the net profit before appropriation of $302,600 and we are going to less appropriation. Now, there's no specific order in which you have to list the appropriations. I started off with the preference dividend. So you've seen the working here, 6% of 240000 Now, where did that come from? So if you go back up to the opening paragraph, it says that there are 6% preference shares. Again, as I mentioned in the previous, work, in previous part solution, sorry, 6% is the dividend rate. And we have to multiply that by the par value of the preference shares in issue. We issued 80,000 preference shares. They have a par value of $3, 80,000 by 3 is 240. So we are multiplying 6% by the 240,000 and that's giving us dividends of 14,400 on the preference shares. The ordinary dividend is 55,000. You can put a subtotal if you want. You don't have to. You can go straight to the transfer to general reserve and then put a subtotal of 159.4. And when we subtract that from the 302,600, we get the retained earnings carried forward of 143,200. Okay, let's take a look at part C. All right, so part C is telling us calculate for MMC Company Limited. We have two things the return on capital invested at 1 Jan 2012. Okay and the dividend rate percentage for the ordinary shareholders. So the return on capital invested requires a net profit to be divided by the capital invested by the shareholders. Okay, so let's go across here. So we're gonna see net profit before appropriation, 302,600. Now, the invested amount by shareholders, we had two amounts invested, amounts by the ordinary shareholders and amounts by the preference shareholders, and that totaled to $760,000. Now, of course, if you want to see that, let's just scroll very quickly across to the general journal. Right, and we're seeing two amounts here, 500 and the 260. Right, now, of course, the, the par value is 400 and 240 for ordinary and preference shares, respectively. But the shareholders also paid in share premium. So that was also invested by them and formed part of your capital base that was then used to fund the acquisition of assets and these things. 
Let's go back across to the calculation quickly. So, right, I'm including both of those items there. And when we divide and express as a percentage, we simply get 39.82%, which you could express simply as 40%. Now, the dividend rate on the ordinary shares requires us to take the 55,000 as the ordinary dividend paid and divide by the par value of the ordinary shares issued, which was 400,000. And when expressed as a percentage, we get 13.75%. Okay, now there's one more part of this part, see? It says the following ratios are averages of the industry. So we have here companies return on capital invested 30.82 and we also have ordinary sh shareholders dividend rate 10.5% and it says to compare your answers from the ratios calculated for C part 1 above to the industry averages given above. Write a statement on MMC's performance for each ratio. Okay, so the industry average for return on capital invested was 30.82. We have 39.82 for MMC and the dividend was 10.5% for the industry and we have 13.75% for MMC. Now, honestly, there isn't much to say. The ratios for MMC were both higher than the industry average. So it means that the company is doing better than the other companies in the industry. Right. So, of course, if you have a better articulation of that, which I'm sure you could muster, um, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Anyway, before I go off on a whole rant, let's end it there. <laughs> okay, guys, so there you have it. That's the solution for question seven from the Jan 2013 PUA paper two. If you have any questions about anything in the video, please feel free to leave it in the comment section below and I'll get back to you when I have a chance. If you want to check out any more videos, I'm going to put some cards up here. Don't forget to subscribe and remember to check out my website where you'll find some useful POA handouts you can download for free. Anyway, guys, as per usual, thank you so much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye.